Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. I'm finally done with the firewood for the season. And we've got just about 18 cord uh, stacked and ready to go. Our, our woodshed there is about 75 feet long, about 20 feet deep. You can see it's stacked about six or seven feet high. So this is a super busy time of year and we've done a lot of chickens. We had to get all the chickens processed. We did a few hundred of them. Uh, that was taken up the weekends. Firewood was taken up every other minute of the day. I did have Chuck come by and help me one day. You guys remember Chuck. Uh, he's going to be in the shop a little bit helping me out with the filming this year. So. Um, we're working on some various things, just checking on the cows, making sure they got enough hay, but um, it's 24 degrees out right now, the weather's been kind of crazy, uh, it'll be 60 by the end of the week again, so very hard to plan things, but um, as usual, waiting on parts again for various pr uh, projects. Sometimes it's super hard getting things shipped on time, or once they get in the system, I never get them. But uh, let's go inside, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, guys, what you see here is an SM465 transmission, and you could see the Cummins flywheel housing there. Uh, remember we're doing a Cummins 4BT into the welder Jeep and easiest way I found to go about making we've got to make an adapter to adapt the transmission to this to this flywheel housing and there's a lot of different ways to do this uh, I didn't realize when I started going down the uh, diesel road that there was going to be um, so many people that either didn't know what they were talking about or were scammers or just bad people to deal with some people the prices were outrageous on things it's just been a real real nightmare so as usual I'm doing my own thing so easiest way to get dimensions and stuff I found is to actually hang the transmission I'm gonna get a light in there now, I've got some some 4 by 4s here um, I've got the got a brand new flywheel in there. I have the housing and I have the flywheel sitting on the correct dimension off of the back of the 4BT. Uh, I've got that dimension. Uh, flywheel is sitting on that. I have a, uh, a little ring in there that that's sitting on so I know that's the correct distance. And uh, we're going to start today making uh, the housing to adapt the transmission to the flywheel housing. Now because I'm getting a low mount turbo on my 4BT, um, <clears throat> here's a starter hole. This is what's called a second quadrant flywheel housing. You have to uh, get the starter away from the turbo when you're using a low mount turbo. If you have the high mount turbo, no big deal where the, where the starter goes. But on a low mount turbo, it would be direct interference. So, this is a second quadrant uh, housing. So, let me get some light in there and I'll show you what I got figured out. Okay, you can see the flywheel in there. And I'm going to build a pilot bushing for that. And it's just going to, I'm going to have it extend out, uh, I believe, about 400 thousandths. Uh, that green tape on there is where my clutch disc has full engagement and then um, the pressure plate uh, will go on top of that. Um, <clears throat> so I know I have full engagement. Uh, the actual dimension, uh, these are just, this is just lumber, you know, but the actual dimension off of this point to the transmission is 3 inch 420. So I know that dimension is right, and uh, we're, we're going to start. I'll show you. I got this. I got some uh, aluminum on the mill. We'll head over there next. I'll show you how I'm going to make this, and 
eventually. I keep trying to get this 465 rebuilt and I go to put it on the bench and and it's just it's hard to get some free time and I got a lot of transmissions, transfer cases, axles, everything going on so I have not found any free time to take you through this but it is coming. I'm gonna put out a uh, 465 rebuild video and show you how I adapt it to um, the Model 18 transfer case so that we could run a PTO to run the welder. So let's head over to the mill and uh, show you what I got going on. Okay everybody what you're looking at there is a piece of 6061 aluminum. It is 18 inches in diameter. It is 3 and 5 eighths thick. And I'm just uh, <coughs> getting a, a center hole in there and uh, and then we'll bore that and uh, and then we'll uh, we'll know we're centered. So um, I got it kind of jigged up on the table there. I've got some clamps. I have it up off of the table about uh, I think that's one inch plate under it. Yeah, those two pieces of one inch plate under there. So uh, we'll have to we'll have to make this round. You know, this is just just cut, but we'll have to make this round and uh, and put a step in it and take the diameter down to 17 and three quarters. Uh, but for right now, what we're going to do is we're going to get an inch and a half hole through that. That'll allow me to center that up on the rotary table. Uh, this is just a hair too big. I could swing 18 inches on the lathe, but I would have to, that's my maximum, I'd have to hold it from an inside hole or, or something else. Uh, I, ju I just can't do it. But once I cut our recess in here for our, our SAE housing, I cut this back a little bit so we get bolts in there. I'll be able to swing that on a lathe. But for right now, we're going to set up. We're going to uh, start boring the, the center hole through there. guys I had to uh, step the drill up a bunch of times and uh, <clears throat> I finally got the hole to inch and a half and that will help me center it on the rotary table real easy I'll just stick a slug in there inch and a half get that centered up on the rotary table clamp it down and begin milling we're gonna leave an inch here to bolt to the flywheel housing we'll probably come in an inch so we got to take out an inch by two and a half all the way around or maybe an inch and a quarter by two and a half I don't know I'll, I'll figure that out but um, <clears throat> now that I got the hole in there uh, the next thing is uh, <clears throat> I got a new rotary table and um, uh, it's, a, it's a little heavy so uh, I need a way to get it on the mill but uh, once I get that on the mill which we're ready for now I want to get this all unclamped get the area cleaned up and uh, 
and then we'll get the, uh, the rotary table on there. See if I can show that to you. Uh, it's a 30 inch, and it's a it's a power driven one, so I don't have to sit there and crank the handle. Um, <clears throat> but it weighs over a thousand pounds, and uh, it's a monster. So I'm building a cart for it now uh, to get that. Uh, on a cart, I'll lower the table, I'll slide it off onto the table, get everything centered up, and then we'll put our piece on there. Um, the, it is a little bit bigger of a table than I wanted, but uh, it was such a fantastic deal uh, that I couldn't pass it up. So, um, <clears throat> if you follow me over here, putting together a cart, I had some. 5x5 five five, uh, 3 8 wall left over had a bunch of stuff from various projects uh, actually built the uh, the English wheel with with a lot of leftovers the same 5x5 five five, but that's half inch wall um, so I'm just tacking some stuff up uh, with 6010 um, it's not uh, not in a condition I'd like it so I'll probably take this now that everything's tacked up uh, I'll take these two arms that are going to be extended. Um, I'll probably take this out and sandblast it. Uh, so when I run the 7018 on there, it's nice and clean. Uh, but like I say, right now I just I got tacks in various places, uh, good enough to flip around and, and sandblast. Then we'll stick some wheels on here. We'll roll this over to the mill. We'll pick up the rotary table, put it on there, and we can finally get moving. Uh, you know, sometimes you got to do five or six or ten different things before you could do one thing. And uh, in the story of my life, you always got to do something to do something else. So, being I had the steel, you know, I was going to buy a die cart or, or something like that. Some kind of hydraulic lift table, but um, a lot of that stuff is made in China. It's junky. Uh, the good American stuff is super, super expensive. Um, so, why not build something? So this is what I'm building, and this is just part one of the Cummins uh, transmission adapter. And um, a lot of folks have wanted me to number or um, make a series out of things. Well, this is part number one, and there'll be many more parts. There's a shifter top. So... Uh, this is just one way of doing it. Um, like I say, there's a lot of different ways. Uh, I ran into a lot of people I did not care for. Don't want to use their products. I don't want to, uh, uh, you know, put something different now that I'm this far in. So, I will show you guys, if you have a little bit of machining skill, or, uh, or know somebody that does, how you can make a very nice transmission to SAE flywheel housing adapter. So, that's what I got for you today, and uh, I should have time to uh, stay on various projects and stuff and, and bring you more videos now that things are quieted down and firewood's in and animal processing is done. So, I'll be in the shop much more. Alright, uh, as always, thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe, share, uh, tell a friend about the videos, and uh, again, appreciate it. Catch you next time.